Chapter 25 Giant Despair Nor could they, with all their skill, get back that night. So they found a screen from the rain, and there they slept till break of day. Now, not far from the place where they lay, was Doubting Castle, the lord of which was Giant Despair, and it was on his ground that they now slept. There Giant Despair found them, and with a gruff voice he bade them wake. "'Whence are you?' said he, "'and what brought you here?' They told him that they had lost the path. Then, said Giant Despair, "'You have no right to force your way in here. The ground on which you lie is mine.' They had not much to say, as they knew that they were in fault. So Giant Despair drove them on, and put them in a dark and foul cell in a stronghold. Here they were kept for three days, and they had no light, nor food, nor a drop to drink all that time, and no one to ask them how they did. Now Giant Despair had a wife, whose name was Diffidence, and he told her what he had done. Then said he, What will be the best way to treat them? Beat them well, said Diffidence. So when he rose, he took a stout stick from a crab tree, and went down to the cell, where poor Christian and Hopeful lay, and beat them as if they had been dogs, so that they could not turn on the floor, and they spent all that day in sighs and tears. The next day he came once more, and found them sore from the stripes, and said that since there was no chance for them to be let out of the cell, their best way would be to put an end to their own lives. "'For why should you wish to live?' said he, with all this woe. But they told him they did hope he would let them go. With that he sprang up with a fierce look, and no doubt would have made an end of them, but that he fell in a fit for a time, and lost the use of his hand, so he drew back and left them to think of what he had said. Christian, friend, what shall we do? The life that we now lead is worse than death. For my part I know not which is best, to live thus or to die at our own hand, as I feel that the grave would be less sad to me than this cell. Shall we let giant despair rule us? Hopeful. In good truth our case is a sad one, and to die would be more sweet to me than to live here. Yet let us bear in mind that the Lord of that land to which we go hath said, Thou shalt not kill, and by this act we kill our souls as well. My friend Christian, you talk of ease in the grave, but can a man go to bliss who takes his own life? All the law is not in the hands of giant despair. Who knows but that God, who made the world, may cause him to die or lose the use of his limbs as he did at first? I have made up my mind to pluck up the heart of a man and to try to get out of this strait. Fool that I was not to do so when first he came to the cell. But let us not put an end to our own lives, for a good time may come yet. By these words did Hopeful change the tone of Christian's mind. Well, at night the giant went down to the cell to see if life was still in them, and in good truth that life was in them was all that could be said, for from their wounds and want of food they did no more than just breathe. When giant despair found they were not dead, he fell in a great rage, and said that it should be worse with them if they had not been born. At this they shook with fear, and Christian fell down in a swoon. But when he came to, Hopeful said, My friend, call to mind how strong in faith you have been till now. Say, could Apollyon hurt you, or all that you heard, or saw, or felt in the valley of the shadow of death? Look at the fears, the griefs, the woes that you have gone through, and now to be cast down. I, too, am in this cell, far more weak a man than you, and giant despair dealt his blows at me as well as you, and keeps me from food and light. Let us both, if but to shun the shame, bear up as well as we can. When night came on, the wife of giant despair said to him, Well, will the two men yield? To which he said, No, they choose to stand firm, and will not put an end to their lives. Then said Mrs. Diffidence, 
At dawn of day, take them to the yard and show them the graves where all those whom you have put, put to death have been thrown and make use of threats this time. So Giant Despair took them to this place and said, In ten days' time you shall be thrown in here if you do not yield. Go, get you down to your den once more. With that, he beat them all the way back, and there they lay the whole day in a sad plight. Now, when night was come, Mrs. Diffidence said to Giant Despair, I fear much that these men live on in hopes to pick the lock of the cell and get free. Dost thou say so, my dear? quoth Giant Despair to his wife. Then at sunrise I will search them. Now, on that night, as Christian and Hopeful lay in the den, they fell on their knees to pray, and knelt till the day broke, when Christian gave a start and said, Fool that I am thus to lie in this dark den when I might walk at large. I have a key in my pouch, the name of which is Promise, that, I feel sure, will turn the lock of all the doors in Doubting Castle. Then said Hopeful, That is good news. Pluck it from thy breast and let us try it. So Christian put it in the lock. When the bolt sprang back, the door flew wide, and Christian and Hopeful both came out. When they got to the yard door, the key did just as well. But the lock of the last strong gate of Doubting Castle went hard, yet it did turn at last, though the hinge gave so loud a creak that it woke up Giant Despair, who rose to seek for the two men. But just then he felt his limbs fail, for a fit came on him, so that he could by no means reach their cell. Christian and Hopeful now fled back to the highway, and were safe out of his grounds. When they sat down to rest on a stile, they said they would warn those who might chance to come on this road. So they cut these words on a post. This is the way to Doubting Castle, which is kept by Giant Despair, who loves not the king of the celestial country, and seeks to kill all who would go there.'